Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you the basic steps required to perform a slam calibration on two Lodestar Gyro Compact 6s using Fusion 2 with Sprint INS. This could be for a sparse LBL array or for a slam metrology amongst other things. I'll also show you how to configure sensor tracking to collect attitude and heading data as well as baselines from the Lodestar Gyro Compacts and we'll do this using Wideband 3. This will collect the data seamlessly during the range-in cycle without using telemetry. Here we can see the ROV being tracked using USB aided INS. As this is a simulated example, I'm first going to give the compact position some error so we can see them return to the correct locations at the end. In the locations table, I'll put one meter errors in the easting, northing and depths. We'll leave them uncalibrated as we're only going to position aid the INS with USBL for this example. So, we can see on the chart we now have a range of about 38 meters. The correct range is exactly 40 meters. Next, we'll go to the measurement configuration tab in the beacons table and set the update rate for sensor tracking and baselines. We just choose the rate we want from the drop down menu. And set the addresses for the baselines. Then we'll apply that. Here we can see the animation indicating that the compacts are being acoustically configured to collect the data once we start LBL ranging. Next, we need to check the status of the ring laser gyros in the compacts to make sure they're turned on and have had time to settle. Settling only takes 6 minutes from power up. That's ok, let's quickly check the other one. That's ready too. Now I'll start LBL ranging. The blue lines indicate that the compacts are not being used in the positioning solution right now. If we right click on a beacon on the chart, we get the slam options and there are various different types to choose from, but today we'll use unconstrained for a 3D slam. Firstly, it's given a warning to check the errors we have assigned to the start positions. These can usually be left at the defaults. OK to that and we see green ranges to the compact and the fan lines are drawn to help us collect the data evenly. Let's start the slam on the second one. And we see the same. Now I'll just speed up the videos as data collection usually takes 15 to 20 minutes. There are lots of different ROV trajectories you can use depending on your task and we can advise you directly on this if you get in touch. On the right here you can see the SLAM diagnostic window and we should monitor this during the data collection to make sure the data is good. It also lets us know when we have enough data to meet our project specification. At the top we can see the horizontal error ellipse for each compact and we'll see these shrink and become circular as we collect more data around the loop. The red ring shows the threshold we intend to meet and we can set this at the top. Below this we have a chart showing the depth error for the beacons and for the ROV. We should see this come down as the geometry changes as we move around the loop. At the bottom of this window we have a chart showing the position change based on the current SLAM data so we can check there's nothing crazy going on. In the measurement window we can see we're getting heading and attitude data we requested as well as the baselines between the two compacts. We'll return to normal speed and we can see the horizontal error is now under 0.2 meters and circular and the depth error is also less than 0.2 meters. As we're happy with those values we'll click fix all and that'll accept the results and set them to calibrated. Also, Fusion 2 will automatically save a PDF report for us. 
INS aiding now switches to LBR ranging and we can see the ranges are green and being accepted. So that gives us confidence that the slam was good. The pie chart on the left shows nice low residuals. If we look at the range on the chart, we can see we're back at the 40 meters we were expecting. So relatively, it's very good. If we look in the locations table, we can see that the absolute positions and depths are also very close to where we started. So within a couple of centimeters. If this was for a metrology, we can now input the baseline, pitch and heading data into a standard metrology spreadsheet as a QC. Or if it's for positioning, we could use these references to extend the array using LBL aided SLAM. For more detailed information on this or on any of our other Sonodyne products, please check out the training pages on our website. Happy tracking and goodbye.